we are doing chapter number two, root of a nonlinear equation. And to find the root may be simple, may be multiple. At the moment, we are doing approximation of the simple root and we are using the first iterative method, which we call bisection method. And bisection method always converge, but very slow. It needs two initial approximation to start A and B, and the midpoint formula is the bisection formula. Last time also I give you the, the error bond formula. This is the error bond formula of the bisection method, alpha minus Cn, B minus A, thexene by 2n, n is a number of iteration, B is a right hand point of the interval, A is a left hand point of the interval, n is a number of iteration. Sometime in exam, teachers say, find the number of iteration, then you have to use this formula. Doctor. Yes. Uh, my name is Khadra Sami, and I think I just uh, att attend to the last uh, class, which was the 8 a.m. So I thought uh, my lecture would be in the 8, but uh, when I just check the table, it's uh, right now. So do I need to come again, or do you just uh, work with 44 number of my uh, name with attendance? Just one minute. Thank you. Your name is Khalid? Khalid al -Asami. Yeah, Khalid. Your number is 33. 43. Okay. Yeah, I, I was in the 8 a.m. lecture. Yes, okay, I, yes, I, I got now, I put here. Okay, okay. thank you. So no need, do, I need, do I, I need to, to update my uh, number, please? No, is it 43 your number is? 43, okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, see you there. And then I give you, I think we finish here this example. Last time we did this example, example number 2.5, that first we have to find the number of iteration, and then we have to find the approximation. So, and we find three, and then we have to find C3, which I did here like this one. Let's do the last example for the fixed point, the bisection method. And this is very good example from examination point of view. Here, what we have to do, you remember in all this previous example, if you, is, is there any student give me idea what we need for the, the chapter number two, I told you we need the two important things. One is optional and two is important, must be. Is anyone tell me Location. what? We need what? Location. Yes. And? And alpha? No, no, alpha optional, maybe or not. Function. Function, we need f of x. And how we get f of x? Because teacher provide you nonlinear equation. And then you find f of x. And then you need the location. Location mean? The interval. The interval. And the, th the third one is optional. Alpha, we are given or not given, no problem. But F and A location must be there. Up to all four example I discuss, we are given F, we are given interval, but we are not given the alpha. Now I give you the example opposite. I give you alpha, but I never give you F, and I never give you the intro. Let's see interval. I think I give, otherwise interval is not given, then the student give me the problem. Why problem, I will tell you. So we are given alpha now here, this example. Let's, this is a very good example, please. He say, find a nonlinear equation. First, you have to find nonlinear equation. And that nonlinear equation must have a simple root, this one. The root eight, root four of 18, that means the fourth root of 18. You understand me? This is alpha, and this is the exact solution of what? Is a such nonlinear equation which you have to find out by yourself. This is the first part. And you have to check, it must be the simple root. 
Second is what? Then you have the function because when you have a nonlinear equation, then can you can easily find out f of x because take all the term one side, make one side equal to the zero. Then he say use bisection method to find second. Please here I mistake. I correct in the new version. I will send you inshallah because I'm just working on that one. Maybe I finish today, then I will send you the chapter number two today, inshallah. Complete. So I just in the book I saw third approximation, doesn't matter. But I write here second, but here is the third approximation to the root using a equal to 2 and b equal to 2.5. It's mean your alpha given, your location given 2 and 2.5. What is not given? Uh, yeah, that's, that's you have to find. So it's mean, what is we are given here now? We are given x or alpha, same thing, right? And what is given x? Is a fourth root of 18, which we can write here like this one. So what you have to do, you have some idea of the equation now. And when you have idea of the equation, then you can easily say, take all the term one side, make one side equal to zero. But what I did when I give this example in the exam, a student make a very big mistake. What they did, they put 18 power one by four on the left-hand side and make this side equal to zero. And it become what? X minus 18 power one by four. And x power is a one. No, we never want x power one in chapter number two. I told you x power should be more than one. So what we do before I take this one on this side, I make simple calculation. I take power four on both side. When I take power four on the left side, what you have? X power four. four. And when I take the power four of this one, four, four cancel, you left only 18. 18. So you have X four equal to 18. Now you can take here 18 on this side. So you have X four minus 18 equal to zero. And this is your nonlinear equation. And this gives you F of X, which is equal to this one. Then after having the function, you can check it's a simple root. And we know what is the condition of the simple root? Please, what is the condition of the simple root? Simple root condition is what? F dash at alpha not equal to the zero, right? So we can have here. Now, what is the derivative of this one? It's four power x three. What is x? 18 power one by four. When you put here 18 power one by four, inshallah, you will get 37 point something. Well, what is, we don't need the job. We need, it is zero or not zero. Of course, this will be never equal to zero. It's mean this alpha is, is a simple root. We finish first part. What is the second part? He say, he say use bisection method to find the third, please not second here. I may, is third approximation to the root, this one. So what is your A to what is your B? And you can easily check here. This is your location. This is your function, right? And you can easily check value of the function F, value of the function at two and value of the function at 2.5. Value of the function at two is negative. Value of the function at two point is a positive. So negative and positive less than zero, it mean guarantee our calculation is our location is okay so we can use bisection formula c1 is equal to what 2 plus 2.5 taxine by 2 so we have this one this is first approximation now we have to find third so now we have how many approximation three now two already given by the teacher two and 2.5 and just we find the third one now we have to choose opposite sign we know at two is a negative, 2.5 is a positive, and 2.25 is also positive. So we ignore last positive over interval decrease this form two to the 2.5. Here your function is negative, here your function is a positive. Now this interval give you C2, which is two plus 2.5 by two. So we have 2.125. This is second approximation. 
but we need one more. So what is the next job? You have to check the value at function at this point is what? Again, positive. So what is your interval now? Your interval change now. What is your interval please? 2.325. Two, 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 uh, uh -huh. two, 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 yeah, so your interval will be, new interval will be 2 and 2.125. It's mean, what is C3? T3 is 2 plus 2125 taxing by 2. And you have the job 2.0625. Finish the second part. He say use bisection method to find the third approximation. We have this one. Then the third part, he say, compute the error bond and absolute error. What is the error bond formula? We, I give you last time. Error bond formula is B minus A taxing by 2N. What is B given? 2.5. What is A given? 2. What is your N? Okay. Three, so you can easily calculate the value of the error bond. An error bond is, where is the error? Yeah, 2.5 minus two, taxing two power three. This is your error bond. And what is the absolute error? What is the formula of the absolute error? I told you, absolute error mean exact minus approximate. What is your exact? 18, oh, so, 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 yeah. 18 power 1 by 4 and 18 by 1 by 4 when you use calculator inshallah you will get 2.05982 this is exact minus approximation is what c3 this is c3 you have and then you find this is the absolute error we have here this is the complete example, please. That's a very good example here. We are not only find the error bond, also we find the absolute error. Why we find the absolute error? Because we already know the exact solution. If you know the exact solution, that means a teacher give you the exact solution, then teacher must also ask you the absolute error. So this is our first numerical method for finding the approximation of the simple root and that is called bisection method. Very quick review for the bisection method is what bisection method has. It is a iterative method. It need two initial approximation to start A and B. Bisection formula is very simple, is a midpoint formula called A plus B taxing by two. Bisection method always converge but converge very slow. And the basic idea of the bisection method is what? Each step, we decrease the size of the interval. And when we decrease the size of the interval, still guarantee alpha majus inside here. Bisection method also have the error mode formula because we will discuss many numerical method, but in some of them has a error bond formula, some they don't have. But the good point of the bisection method also, it has the error bond formula, which I give you B minus A taxing by two power N. Now, if you have any question about the bisection formula, any difficulty in anywhere, just ask me. Otherwise I move to the second numerical method, please. Is okay? Clear. Clear, very good. So now we move to the, the second one. This is not a very good method, but in other sense, this method we will use throughout the chapter. Why method converge? Why method diverge? If method converge, slow or far, this method will be help us. But same time, this method will help us to find approximation of the root of the sim simple root of approximation of the simple root. Now, here before I give you the fixed point formula, I give you what do you mean by fixed point? Fixed point, 
is this definition. What is the fixed point of a function? A fixed point of a function I call G, new function I call G. A fixed point of a function is a such number alpha when we put in the function, the job is the same alpha. So what is fixed point? Fixed point is a such point when we put the point in the function and the job is the same point, then we call that point is, is a fixed point. And please, I told you, when I put the point in the function, if the job is zero, what we call? A uh, root or a uh, uh, root. Or we call is a root. So this is the difference between the point and the root and the fixed point. What is root mean? When we put point into the function, job is zero. And when we put the point in the function, job is the same point, we call it is a fixed point here. So this method, please, we will not call root, we will call alpha as a fixed point. But remember that one, the root and the fixed point, exactly the same meaning we will use here in our chapter number two. How? I will tell you, inshallah. But first you understand the idea of the fixed point. You know the fixed point is a such point when we put in the function, the job is the same point we have here now. Let's I give the simple example. X equal to two is a fixed point of this function. This is your G function. We call X is equal to two is a fixed point. Why? We put in place of X is a two. So what is two you put? It become four minus eight plus eight, eight, eight cancel. Four taxim by two is what? Two. So G2 equal to two, yes, it is guaranteed. Two is a fixed point of the G here. Now let's come to the things here now for our chapter. This is a definite generalized definition. Now, how we use fixed point in case of fixed point methods. The fixed point method means we need not a root, we need the fixed point. So what we are given, we are given always equation. An equation means nonlinear equation. And from that nonlinear equation, we find f of x easily take all that from one side into one side and make one side equal to zero. Non-zero side is called your f of x. Should be nonlinear, right? Now, what we do here in this method, we are given f, we convert f into the form of g. This is your job. We will not work on f. We work on the g, but the job of g is exactly the same, the job of f. They are equivalent job. So how can we convert f into g? We have to use this formula. We convert f of x equal to Two function gx minus x or x minus gx same thing please because in the book one place i use gx minus x or in place x is equal to gx is exactly the same meaning because we know f of x is equal to what always uh, zero. zero so when f of x is equal to zero what is your x x is equal to g of the x that's what we want here now so we have to convert f equal to two function. One is g, another is x. x is the linear, but g must be non-linear. We put x on the left-hand side and take all the term on the right-hand side. We are given f of x and x majud. We take x on one, x power one on the one side and take all of the term on the right hand side and right hand side is your g of x. That's a way to find g. For one f, we can have million of g, but among the million, there will be only one g, which is correct, which is the good one we want here. We want g must have a fixed point inside the, the location. Location mean interval. 
and the interval for G and interval F are exactly, exactly the same, please. The only difference is what? When we talk F, we call root. When we talk G, we say the fixed point and fixed point and root exactly the same. Both must be inside the interval is the same meaning here now. Now I give you the example you can easily understand here now. Now let's you have, when you have the G, now we need the formula. What is the formula of the fixed point method? This is a very simple formula. Xn plus one equal to G of Xn. Fixed point method is an iterating method, like bisection. And every iterating method need initial approximation, like bisection need two, A and B. Fixed point need only one initial approximation, which we call X naught, given by the teacher. So when we have X naught, we have a G, we put X naught in G, we have a new approximation X1. We put X1 in G, we have a new approximation X2. We put X2 in G, we have X3, X3 in G, X4, continue like this one here. Yeah? This is called the fixed point method. Fixed point method is an iterating method. It need one initial approximation to start, maybe converge, maybe diverge, but when converge, not very fast. It's a slow also, like a bisection method. So I have here. Okay, let's, you remember this is the same example I use in the bisection method. We have a nonlinear equation x cube equal to 2x plus 1. It has three root, but only one root is majud inside the interval 1.5 and 2. Then he say use fixed point method. When teachers say use fixed point method, please we don't need F, we need what? We need G. G. And it means, how can we have a G? I told you, G we can get, inshallah, from the F. Given F. And I told you, for one F, you can have more than million of value of G, but among the G million, there will be only one, the good one. And how can we say which G will be good one? We that G will be good one, which give when we use this formula and the job is coming inside the interval, then we say that G is good. Because in the interval is what? Root or fixed point. Same thing, but use inside the interval. Then he say use fixed point method with X naught is equal to 1.5 because fixed point need one initial approximation to start. Now, as I told you, this F, you can find million of G in this example, I just give you, for example, I give you the three val different value of G here. One thing condition, remember that one, how can you find? You only put X on one side and take all the term on the other side and other right hand side is your G. But remember with the condition G must be non-linear, we have here now. What I did, first case, I take one on the other side, it become what? X cube minus one taxi equal to what? Two X, and then I easily I take two in the Mukam, so we have X is equal to this one, like this one. The first fixed point formula is what? I take, you understand this one? I take one on this side, x cube minus one equal to x two, I take in the Mukam, so we have x is equal to this. What is the other one? Is this one. How can I take, very simple one, I take two x on this side. I think, yeah, I take two x on this side. So what we have, x cube minus two x is equal to one. Then I take x common from the left hand side. So what we have? x square minus two equal to one. Then I take x only the left hand side and take all the term on the side. This will come in the Mukam. So then we can have here is one taxim x square, one taxim x square minus two. What is the third one? 
the third condition is i just take the same thing but i convert what is x cube x cube i can write here this way x cube equal to x x square equal to 2x same thing then i take this only one x in the mukam so we have 2x plus 1 taksim by x and here is x square but we don't want left side x value more than 1 so we take square root on both side and then we can have it this but like this one as i told you i can find or you can find million way to find the g but is a useless because among the million there will be only one g should be good and rest is not we are interested now because we don't know this g is good or not good how can i know this g is good or this g is good or this g is good we can only say the good because we know the jawab is exact solution is where the exact solution is interval in the interval so what we do we use this formula and this formula and this one and then we check which formula give you the jawab which is coming inside the interval remember as i told you your interval is what your interval is 1.5 and 2 now i use here this is i make the table for all three here so you are given initial approximation 1.5 right so you put n is equal to 0 so you have x1 equal to x0 power 3 minus 1 taxin by 2 and when you use calculator you have 1.1875 which is not coming inside the interval but we can at least we have to check two time because when we do the second time also is not coming then it is guarantee that this is not good g when we use second time we put n is equal to 1 so we have what x2 equal to x1 power 3 minus 1 x1 we just calculate 1.18 and we use calculator you have 0.33 and this is also not coming so this mean this g is a wrong is not we are interested that we do the same thing with other g here your x not is given 1.5 you put n is equal to 0 x1 is equal to what one the same x not square minus 2 x not is 1.5 x 1.5 square mean 2.25 2.25 2 is a point 25 one the same point 25 is what always 4 and 4 is not inside the interval but to make guarantee use one more time so when we use second time the 4 power 2 16 minus 2 14 one taxim 14 is 0.0 this mean this is also not good it's mean we check the third one same x not when we use first time we have 1.63 alhamdulillah this is coming inside the interval but to make guarantee we use one more time it is also coming inside the interval that mean this g has a fixed point and that is a fixed point here this math g is a good one because here we use the jawab is coming inside the intro now this is the waste of time here waste of time here because here we use the formula and then we say not coming inside so it's mean g not it's mean we don't use the formula in first we use small condition if that condition is satisfied then we say this formula this g is good and then g is good when we use the formula of fixed point our jawab always come inside the the interval we have here it mean we need some condition here condition like like the root remember that one here please what condition i give you for the the alpha is majood inside the interval the root is majood inside the interval is any student i give the two condition please Do they have a different sign yes first one your function must be continuous right in the interval and the basic condition is the second one what is that one opposite uh, 
opposite sign then it is guarantee 100 percent alpha majority in the a and b the same thing we call here now we need what not f we need g now and how can we say that the fixed point is inside the interval not if the fixed point is inside the interval then that g must be the good one in place of f we use g now and but not condition opposite sign here we use this condition here the number one g must be uh, differentiable yeah continuous and differentiable okay. differentiable mean derivative majus right and this is the thing here that for every point in the interval when we put in the g jawab should be come inside the interval sure. then we say g is good one can you for example i say this g is not good right what is your interval your interval was what one and 1.5 i think and 1.5 and 2 can you give me what is the value of g2 at this one uh -huh, so very I, simple uh, 3.5 3.5 3.5 so this is not coming it's mean this g definitely not good what is the value of G two here, half. I don't take time here. Four, four minus two, two, yes, one over two, half. And half is not. So this is not good. So it's mean what we have to check first condition. But one thing should you remember: this G, this G uh, uh, is continuous in the interval. No problem with the continuity. But the condition for this is not satisfied. That the value of because we cannot check the because between A and B we have million of the point, so we only check the end point. We check G at A and G, G check G at B. The both job should be inside the interval. Then we say this G has at least one fixed point. Uh, at sure. least. Yes. Uh, for the second uh, equation, uh, it, it is not differentiable, right? At uh, B. Which is? For the second one, mm -hmm. uh, it, it is not continuous, sorry. It is not continuous at B, right? It's continuous. Why? What is the problem with that? Oh, right, right. Sorry. sorry. Is it continuous? Sorry, sorry. No, no it's continuous. It is continuous. Continuous mean you put any value 1.5 to 2 and between them, this job will be real number. It's yeah, defined. Yeah, yeah, okay. Now, if this condition happened, then we say G has at least one fixed point in the interval. At least one fixed point mean minimum one, maybe two, maybe three. But remember, I told you in chapter number two, we say location must have how many? Location must have only one information, one exact root, not more than one. Like this example, x power three equal to this one. How many this one has root? Three. But we say only only one majus inside the interval, not two here. So in the fixed point theorem, when this condition we say is satisfy, then we say minimum one fixed point is maju. But we don't want minimum. We want only, we want only one inside the interval. And how can we find only one inside the interval? We take the derivative of G in the absolute sense derivative of g must be less than one 
for any point inside the interval, then it is 100% guarantee you have a one unique fixed point. Unique, only unique mean one inside the, the interval. So you understand this one. Here I give the condition. First we check that fixed point mujud inside the interval or not. First condition is what? Gx must be continuous and differentiable. And the value of the G at the end point of the interval, when we put should be Jawab come inside the interval. This two first two condition give you idea what? Minimum one fixed point majud, but we don't want minimum. We want only one and only one give you the condition that G dash must be less than one for every point inside the interval. Last time I give the problem in exam check, G is, G has a unique fixed point. So when I say unique fixed point, a student use what this condition on G dash is less than one. They say this is a condition for the unique. No, please, before you find unique, you have to check this too. Is at least majus or not? And then you go for the unique. This is a proper way. And when you, this is the rule, please, like the, we say the root majus inside the interval, we say opposite sign, but in the case of the fixed point method, we have to use this condition here, please. When majus, when we guarantee is unique fixed point, then we use the fixed point method and fixed point method always converge. Converge means they give you the job for any initial approximation using will come in the intro. And number last point D, I also give E, but no need for the E in 254. We only use the third part, the fourth part. And this is the error bond formula of the fixed point method. So what is the error bond formula of the fixed point method? Like a by section I give you before is alpha minus xn. xn is approximation, alpha is exact, but we have to solve the right hand side. k power n, one minus k, x1 minus x2. What is x naught? Give an initial approximation from the teacher. You have to find, again, teacher give you, you need to find x1 by using the fixed point formula. And then you have to calculate k. What is k? I give here. K is the maximum value of the derivative inside the, the intro. And what is N? Number of iterations. Let's I give you example. And then I will, what example I finish you here now? I finish 2.7, right? Let's, before I give you the all other example, let's I give you the, I will come back inshallah next time. I give you last example for that case here. This is the example I give you. This is a way problem coming exam. He say, this is a nonlinear equation, right? This is your F of. And this affects, as I told you, million of this one, G. But teachers say, for this, F of X, only one G, possible rearrangement, only one G he give you, which is lin X N plus two. You can, how can I have this one? I take lin on both side. When I take lin on left hand side, what is the job? Uh, X. X, and here lin plus X two, this is your things you have. Then the question is say, show that G hex a unique fixed point in the interval. This is the first part. The second part, use fixed point formula to compute the third approximation by this one. And then compute the error bond. And this is compute the number of iteration, which I told you. Iteration always find with the help of the error bond formula. Let's we talk about this one. Now let's we have here now, You can easily see this one has a root inside the interval or not for F, but no need for that one here because we are not working on F, we are working on G. So what is your, we start from here. What is your G, lin X plus two? And now you can see, and what is the derivative of G? 
derivative of ln is what? One over this. And now you can see here, your first G is continuous. Definitely your G is continuous in the interval because your interval is one and two. You put G1, what is G1? Is a ln three. And what is ln three? Ln three is 1.09, which is inside the interval. What is G2? At the other point, lin4, lin4 is what? 1.384, or both are modules inside the interval. It's mean at least one fixed point. Then you take the derivative of G. Derivative of G is what? One over X plus two. Now you can put any point in the interval in G, it must be less than zero. When you put one, what you have? G dash one. 1 over uh, 3, uh, one, uh, 1 over 3 is less than 1. You put 2, 1 over 4, which is less than 1. So it means your G has a unique fixed point. And now, please, you have to mention here, like I mentioned here, I find G1 coming inside the interval, G2 is coming inside the interval. I cannot check middle point because middle point is million with the middle point. So we simply say, you have to mention in that one, after checking G1 is this, G2 is come, both are coming inside the interval. And also at G1 is, what is the job? 1.09 and at two, other end point of the interval, what you have? 1.38. What is your function increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Increasing. Increase, just you write here. After you write G1 is this and G2 is this one. And you simply say my G is a increasing. Like I mentioned some, yes, my G is increasing. To say this word mean no need to check the middle point here, right? We want either increasing or decreasing, not increasing, decreasing same time, right? Either increasing for all points in the interval or decreasing for all in the point. So it's increasing, alhamdulillah. So both condition as said, G is continuous in the interval, value of G at all the point in the interval, majud inside the interval, and G dash is less than one in the absolute sense, even if they're negative, but we consider absolute sense is also less than one. So this means G has a unique fixed point. We finish the first part. The second part, he say, if we are guaranteed, now it's mean, now we are ready to use the formula. And when we use a formula, our job always come inside the interval. Why? Because we already satisfy G is a correct one, the good one. G has a unique fixed point in the, the interval. <clears throat> so now what is the formula, this one? You put N is equal to zero, right? What do you have the X1? What is your X1? Is a GX naught. And what is X naught? Given by the teacher 1.5. So you have 1.5 plus two. 3.5, ln 3.5, you will get calculator is 1.25, so this is. Then you find gx x2, because it's a third approximation. You have to use the formula three times. What is x1? x1, we just find out this. So this plus two of the lin will give you this, and same way you have the x3, and that is your second part, he say. Use fixed point formula to compute the third approximation. And what is the third part? Compute the error bond. An error bond formula I give you here. Where the error bond formula, you remember I give you k power n, taxi one minus k, x1 minus x naught, right? This is, now you need to find k. k is what? The maximum value of the derivative inside the interval. What is G dash at one? One by three, right? Because we know G dash is what? G dash is one over X plus two. G dash at one is 0.3. G dash at the other end point is what? One by four. So which one is a maximum? Is a point three? Point three. Yeah. G dash at one is a maximum value give you, which is the job is what? 
0.33. So K is your what? The maximum of K1 and K2. This is K1, this is K2, maximum value is this. So we have 0.33 power N. N is what? The third approximation, one minus K, X1. What is X1? Is this one, and this is X0. This is your, this is your, the maximum error or error bound. And the last part, he say, when teacher give you the error bound formula, always teacher asks you this question, number D, that find the number of iteration. That means you have to cal cal calculate the, the end here. Now, what he say? He say, find the number of iteration for this problem with the accuracy 10 minus two. So what you have here now, you have here now, this is the Elborn formula, Kn one minus K, X one minus X naught is less than equal to 10 minus two. This is given by the teacher. You know X naught, 1.5. You know X1, 1.25 this. You know K, 0.33. What is N? No, you, that's, you have to calculate by yourself. So what you have to do here, put the value here. You have this one. Simplify this one. Simplify this one. And then take the lin on both sides. Simplify this. Taxing by this. Take on the, the other side. And then you take the lin on both sides. The lin of this one is n. Lin of this less than equal to this one. Lin of, you remember that. Lin between zero and one, always negative. So this is the lin negative job. This is the lin negative job. So you multiply negative both sides. This will be changed. And when you simplify, you have the n is greater than equal to 3.2, which means n is integer. So we take next integer, which is what? Four. So it means if we want to get the accuracy 10 minus two, we need how many iteration? How many times we have to use the formula? The fourth time. Last time in the exam, I give this problem exactly same, only I change the accuracy. I give in place of 10 minus two, I give 10 minus six. So 10 minus six need more here, right? This is called the fixed point formula. Any question, please? This is a complete example I gave you. That how can you check? Sometime in exam, teacher not give you. Here, teacher give you only one G. Sometime in exam, teacher give you two G. And they say, which G is good? Use it. Then you have to check the same way like that one, which I told you to check that. So in second numerical method, we call fixed point method and the fixed point method, we need G and how we get G, we get G from F and G always given by the teacher. You don't have to do, but only you have to check this G is good or not good. And how can you check G is good or not good? I give you the condition G at end point of the interval, value of the G at the end point of the interval must be come inside the interval. And the second condition, G dash in the absolute sense must be less than one for any point inside the interval. Then this give you the guarantee that the fixed point is majud inside the interval. Fixed point and root exactly same. When we say root, we use F. When we say fixed point, we call a G we have here. Yes, please. We do continue inshallah more example next time here. We finish to and now we will come back here because we finish 2.7 then I jump. I give you inshallah a good example this next time. If you have any question, please. Is okay? Yes, it's okay. Right, okay. We continue, inshallah, more about this one. And I make this one small change in the my previous lecture note. I update it now. Inshallah, I need some one more example here, one, two example I put. Then I will send you chapter number two, complete to you on your email, right? Just take that one chapter. 
So then whenever I finish the chapter, I send you that you don't need to look here and there. No need to check any Muzakram, please. You will confuse. This, my lecture note is more than enough for the exam. Please, no example will come in the exam without inside the, the my book here, right? Good one. Let's take your attendance now, please. So I will call your number one and you don't say yes, you just say my name, your name, please, okay? Number one. I am Tawa, doctor. Yeah. Number two. Saad al Umar. Wow. Number three. Abdullah Harbi. Wow. Number four. Mushar al Sheikh. Wow. Number five. Ahmed Shimmer. Number six. Muhammad Al Gahbani. Number seven. Number eight. Ziyad Al Wasl. Number nine. Usam Al Safi. Right. Number ten. Usam Al Safi. Right. Number eleven. Muhammad Al Khalifa. You see, now when I take attendance, every student speak. When I see any question, no one speak. Maybe sleeping or whatever. Number 12. Shari Roja. Number 13. Zaid al Number 14. Fahad Ali. Right. Number 15. Abdullah Khalid. Number 16. Bandar al Right. Number 17. Umar Anhabi. Number 18. Number 19. 20. Ahmed Khshiba. 21. Tell us this. Number 22, please. Uh, Hadi Gahtani. Right. Number 23. Number 24. 24, Salman. Number 25. Hamad bin Sheikh. 26. Hamad al Umar. 27. Hussam Khalid. 28. Abdul Aziz al Anzi. Yes, two times. Thirty. Twenty nine. Yeah. Nice sweater. Thirty. Yes, present to our sharing. Yeah. Thirty one. Alwalid. Thirty two. Abdullah Shaharani. Yes, number thirty three. Nasar Abdurrahman. Thirty four. Yes, I'll help you. 35 36 Osama al 37 Charis Shwerd 38 Sultan Tariq 39 Abd Rahman Turkey 40 Abd Mahsan 41 42 Muhammad al Barwak. 43. Finish everyone. Oh, doctor, there is someone sending in the chat. What he saying in the chat? He said uh, 35 is here. Sultan. There's a two in the chart. Only the 31. Yeah, 35 is that's okay. Finish, please, please, please. I repeat again, if you have some question, please don't be hesitated because if you have small question, if you cannot ask me here, you can email and you can WhatsApp me and please, you must be very good in it. I don't want my student have a poor marks, should have a good marks. 
If you want to repeat some topic, I will repeat 20 times, 40 times, please. But you go for the exam should be the best one, the best student. Always consider yourself is the best one. Right? Continue, inshallah, more about that one. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, see you. Bye.